Hey guys, and welcome to another video of mine. So, um, I, before I do that, I'd just like to give you guys a few updates on why I haven't been booktubing as much and been really present on Twitter and such. It's because I'm graduating in three months from my master's and I have to get started and write my thesis. And in order for me to write my thesis, I have so many last minute things to do and Ramadan's coming up, which means that it's coming up in two days, which means that I have to like try to finish everything before Ramadan. So basically that's why I haven't really been present because I've been busy. But um, I have a couple of videos that's gonna be uploaded on this channel and one of them is this one and basically before the year 2015 started, I made a resolution video, which I will leave the link of that down below. And in this res resolution video, I basically talked about how I want to read more books from my own shelf, request less review books and be very selective on that, and try to not buy as many books. Two things I've really achieved, A, is that I barely bought any books this year, maybe three or four books. Uh, B, I did start reviewing or requesting so many, um, like, less books in total as I used to back in 2014 and the previous years um, and I have started reading more of my own books unfortunately because I was I've been so busy with school I haven't been reading as much as I always do so that progress has been somewhat slow but I'm still happy with how much I've read so basically in this video I'm just gonna show you guys all the books that I've read that are on my shelf and let's get started so the first book on this list is a book that I actually don't own anymore because I ended up giving it away because I did not like it and that book is A Great and Terrible Beauty by Libba Bray. I gave this book like one or two stars. I skimmed through most of this book. The next book that I read is Bunheads by Sophie Flack. This is a ballerina type book and I love books that are centered around dance and such. And I did end up fairly enjoying this one and I gave this three stars. I also ended up reading Shadow Kiss by Rochelle Mead, which is the third book in the Vampire Academy series, and I actually fairly enjoyed this one. I ended up giving this 4 out of 5 stars. I finally picked up Dangerous Girls by Abigail Haas. I really enjoyed this one. I enjoyed the mystery and being able to guess what's going on, or who killed who, and like who's lying and such, and I ended up uh, buddy reading this with my friend back in Dubai. We literally had Skype open and we were reading at the same time throughout the whole night. Um, mostly morning her time because of the time difference. Um, but yeah, we read the whole thing together and it was awesome. I loved it. I gave this one a 4 out of 5 stars. I also ended up picking up Angel Fall by Susan E as well as World After by Susan E. I gave both of these books 5 out of 5 stars. They are fantastic, amazing. I think they are one of the few books out of the 47 that I've read that I ended up giving 5 out of 5 stars and loving and not being able to put down. This book, this series is just fantastic and I already ordered um, End of Days by Susan E online yesterday actually so I am dying for that to come in because I needed to complete my beautiful collection as well as read it because this is just a really good angel, not really angel, like post-apocalyptic series. Really good. I also ended up reading The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson, another one of those books that I ended up buying because I was dying to get and then shelving it for months. So I finally read this one. Unfortunately, I didn't really like it. I ended up giving it 2.5 to 3 stars. And um, yeah, I will not be continuing on with the um, series and one thing I already guessed who, who the prince was and who the assassin was from the first time I met both of them. So it's kind of obvious and then nothing else happened after that. I then read another one of my most anticipated books of 2015 and it is P.S. I Still Love You by Jenny Han, the sequel to To All the Boys I've Loved Before. I ended up really enjoying this one. I read it as soon as I bought it, the same night that I bought it. And I ended up giving this one 4 out of 5 stars. It was not as good as To All the Boys I've Loved Before because I had um, some issues with Peter, even though I love Peter. I don't know what's going on with Peter in this book. And um, yeah, I thought it was slightly immature. Um, there were a lot of immature scenes in To All the Boys I've Loved Before, but they were very quirky and cute, and I was able to not, you know, Get get stuck on how immature they were, but in here a lot of things kind of pissed me off But I still ended up giving it four out of five stars and the most anticipated books keep rolling Another one is Willow Groove by Kathleen Peacock the third and last book in the Hemlock trilogy Which is one of my all-time favorite trilogies. 
Um, funny thing is that my friend, the one who lives in Dubai, Banna, recently read all three books back to back and she is also in love with this series. It's a werewolf series trilogy, so if you guys haven't checked it out, you definitely should because it gives a very different take on werewolves. It's more of like a mystery thriller with werewolves and it's not as much paranormal as it is contemporary. And basically werewolves are people who have lupin syndrome, so they're basically people who have a disease and it makes them turn into wolves. But I loved this one. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. I did not disappoint me and I was just so happy that I actually bought it. I do have an ARC but I really wanted a finished copy to match my collection. I then ended up picking a book that I have had my eyes on for years but never really ended up getting because I couldn't find it anywhere. And it was Psych Major Syndrome by Alicia Thompson. This is a book where it was published before the NA genre really happened and this is uh, about a girl who's in university but it's shelved as YA. I really enjoyed this one. It was like a 3 star, 3.5 star. It was very cute and it passed the time and uh, yeah, I'm happy I finally got around to reading it. And then I picked up Not A Drop To Drink by Mindy McGuinness. The epic read girls keep raving about this book and I found it on Book Outlet. Um, over a year ago, so I'm like, I must buy this so I can read it. And I read it, and it was awful. It was awful. It was a one star read. The book was, in my opinion, I thought the book was a waste, that it really didn't know what it wanted to be, and that um, the character lost its way along the way. That it was just a very weird book, and you really didn't understand what was the whole point. And what story was the author really telling? That's what I thought. It was kind of weird. So yeah, um, I have a feeling I'm going to be getting rid, of, getting rid of this one for sure. Another book that I ended up reading is one that I have been dying to read. This is the theme for this um, video, which I'm happy with because it means that I read a lot of the books that I've been meaning to read for a while. And this one is Trouble by Non Pratt. This is a UK um, author. Um, I think it's a debut novel by her and it deals with teen pregnancy but it's more about the friendship than a romance and I really enjoyed that one I did not expect it to be like that and I loved it so I give this one 4.5 out of 5 stars then I picked up Mortal Heart by Robin Lefevers which is the third and last book in the His Fair Assassins trilogy uh, ever since I read Dark Triumph back in December I really wanted to pick this one up and when I got it I'm like I must read it because I really want to work on completing a lot of my trilogies this year so I ended up reading it. I really enjoyed it. I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. On to the last three books. Um, the next one is Uninvited by Sophie Jordan. I've had my eye on this one ever since the cover was revealed and it talked about, you know, having a, um, a homicidal tendency syndrome thing. Yeah, HT HTS and like dealing with genetics and such. This is a big reason why I love Control by Lydia King because it really infused the science in the story seamlessly. So I was really excited for this one. My sister loved it when she read it as an e-arc so I had very, not really high hopes. I don't really get high hopes when it comes to books just because everyone's so different so I wouldn't know if I'm gonna love it just because 90% of the population loved it. So I ended up um, reading this one didn't really like it. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. Even that is a bit generous. I felt it was very cliched, very typical high schoolish. Um, I expected that most of the book will be centered or in um, uh, a concentration camp. Unfortunately, literally almost halfway through the book and I still nothing new was revealed to me because everything else was everything that happened was written in the synopsis. And once they got to the concentration camp, it was very shallow, like nothing, oh, we're gonna go work out, and then eat, and then hit each other, and then escape, and then done. It was just not a book for me. Um, but yeah, I'm keeping this one just because my sister loves it so much. The last, the last two are adult books. Um, the book before the last is The Rosie Project by Graham Simpson. I loved this book. Guys, it was very... I loved it. It's, do you see the smile on my face? I couldn't stop laughing and smiling when I was reading this one because the main protagonist, um, what's his name, Don? Don Tillman reminded me so much of Sheldon and his awkwardness and his social um, capabilities, i.e. he had no social interaction capabilities. He was just so funny in the way that 
he actually was very ignorant on how to treat people nicely and like a proper way kind of like Sheldon basically maybe Sheldon's a bit rude and he knows it but he actually had no clue and it was really fun I like that even though it was a romance it was still centered around this woman who was trying to find out who her father was and that's why the Rosie the girl is called Rosie I really 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 want to pick up the sequel the Rosie effect um, however I'm hoping to check out some used bookstores maybe find it there but it's definitely in the plan and I gave this one 5 out of 5 stars. The last book that I read from my collection is Me Before You by Jojo Moyes. This is a fiction novel so it's not a chiclet. Jojo Moyes doesn't write chiclet, she writes adult fiction and it deals with this um, main protagonist who ends up working um, as... what's the word? She takes care of Will and Will is a quadriplegic? I think I said that completely wrong, I'm sorry. But basically he has a chip on his shoulder and he really, like he was a very successful businessman and such, but then um, a car hit him while he was walking, crossing the street, and he ended up in a wheelchair, Cannot ha he doesn't have um, any control over his, his arms or his legs. So basically it was a very, very hard book to read, just basically putting yourself in the shoes of Will and is a very, It's a romance, but at the same time, it's very realistic, and I cried my eyes out reading this book, and it's turning into a movie, and Sam from The Hunger Games, as well as Love Rosie, is the main guy, and I'm just gonna cry right now, just thinking about it. This movie's gonna make me cry my eyes out. So, ah, even though, even though the book obviously had such a big emotional impact on me, I did end up giving it four out of five stars. I think just based on the emotional impact, I would definitely give it 5, but just based on the overall story, I gave it 4 because the story somewhat dragged on, especially in the beginning. I have a problem in that if the synopsis tells me something, I expect that to happen in the first 50 pages because dragging it on is useless to me because I already know it's going to happen, so why are we making it prolonging the whole thing? So yes, um, this one. Really enjoyed it. Don't know if I'll read the sequel. Don't know how I feel about that. Do I really want to cry? Do I not? I guess it depends on if I want to or not. But I'm very excited for the movie. So these are all the books that I read from uh, my own shelves. I did read a lot of books from the library, including Heat of the Moment, uh, Cecilia Ahern's The Year I Met You. Um, there's also um, Tamara Weber's fourth book, um, Katie McGarry's 1.5. Um, there's some that I borrowed from friends, obviously. I also read A Court of Thorns and Roses. Um, didn't really enjoy that book, <laughs> fortunately. I'm sorry, guys. And, um, yeah, I've been using the library a lot. I've act I'm actually currently reading a library book, which is the uh, Summer of Chasing Mermaids. But, yeah, that's it. I, go I, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I must go pick up my sister from the station. So, see you next time. Bye!